There were many skirmishes that took place in McGoffin County, Kentucky, and this is the largest among them. This battle would take place in Sayersville, Kentucky from April 13th through 14th, 1864. Confederate Colonel Ezekiel F. Clay would face off against Union Colonels George W. Gallup and C.J. True. Come along with us as we dive into the miscalculations of Clay that would lead to the disaster for his troops. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now. Back to our story. The First Attack Confederate Colonel Ezekiel Clay, who had 1,000 men under his command in the 3rd Kentucky Mounted Rifles, was conducting raids into Kentucky. Clay came upon and engaged the Union troops at Painesville, Kentucky. Those troops were part of the Union Forces Subdistrict of Eastern Kentucky. There would be four regiments total under the command of Union Colonel George W. Gallup. They were the 14th Kentucky Infantry and the 39th Kentucky Mounted Infantry and reinforcements under Colonel C.J. True consisting of the 40th Kentucky Infantry and the 11th Michigan Cavalry. Gallup had 750 men and they held their ground against Clay's attack. Retreat and Liza Whitaker After a seven-hour skirmish, Clay thought that Gallup would not pursue after a heavy day of fighting. Since his own troops were exhausted on April 14th, Clay moved his troops to the mouths of Pungeon and Little Half Mountain Creeks to get some needed rest. This proved to be a very epic miscalculation on Clay's behalf. There are some stories about a lady named Liza Whitaker Joseph from Pungeon. Evidently, Gallup needed help to navigate the footpaths in the area. Liza Whitaker Joseph showed her bravery as she led the troops in hot pursuit of Clay starting at Ivington and proceeding down Gun Creek to Brushy Fork. It was here that Gallup thanked Liza for her courage and told her to hold back as they were close to where the enemy was located. The Second Attack It was here that Gallup split his men into two sections to form pinchers to trap Clay. About 300, or approximately one half of his men, went down the ridge of Little Half Mountain with Orlando Brown leading the way. Gallup, with the rest of his men, proceeded down the Fred Reisner branch. Colonel Gallup was assisted in Battle of Pungeon and Half Mountain by Colonel John S. Deals, Colonel David A. Mims, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Meek Ferguson, Lieutenant E. J. Roberts, Acting Assistant Adjutant General Colonel Orlando Brown, and Captain John C. Collins, who claims to have shot Clay. This move surprised Clay, who engaged his troops against the Union attack. As the battle was ending, Clay was shot in the eye. Some reports state that this was a mortal wound, but he would recover. Evidently, it was a serious enough wound that Clay removed himself from the battle. The Final Tally The Union forces won the day with the Confederate suffering losses of 24 men killed, 50 men captured, and the capture of 200 horses, 400 saddles, and 300 small arms. The Union side would have small losses with 400 wounded but no deaths. The numbers varied depending upon the source material. Many thanks to the source, Yapot. We now have a letter that Gallup wrote concerning the battle. Quote, Headquarters District of Eastern Kentucky, Half Mountain, Licking River, April 14, 1864. General, I pursued the enemy to Half Mountain, Licking River, 13 miles above Sawyersville. Surprised him at 12.30 a.m. today, capturing his pickets. The engagement lasted five hours. We have captured as near as I can find out over 100 horses, 200 saddles, 200 stand of arms, Killed and mortally wounded 25, took 50 prisoners, among them E.F. Clay mortally wounded. Many horses killed. 
our loss, four wounded, one seriously, none killed. It is a complete rout. We will camp on the field tonight. My men are worn. I shall send my best mountain men for a few hours on their track. Yours respectfully, George W. Gallup, Colonel, Commanding, Brigadier General E. H. Hobson, Lexington, Kentucky. Unquote. Clay was captured during the battle and was taken to the Union Prison on Johnson Island, located on Lake Erie near Sandusky, Ohio, by Elijah Patrick. While in prison there, Clay was pardoned by President Abraham Lincoln. Clay refused this pardon and voluntarily stayed at the prison until Lee surrendered, at which point, once again, Lincoln extended a second pardon and Clay accepted it. This battle is often confused with the Battle of Ivy Mountain, but they were two different conflicts during two different times in two different locations. Ivy Mountain took place just north of Pikeville, Kentucky in 1861. For more information, please watch our video on the Battle for Ivy Mountain. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Civil War Battles. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification button. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries in Appalachian history.